Okay, so today we have chassis number three out of four for the same person. And this is another K7000. I do not know what's wrong with it. I just opened it up quickly to look and make sure it was the 7000. Uh, so we'll have to go over that together. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Now we have caps here. A very old, wow, a very old uh, set. Doesn't appear to be complete either. A lot of the, a lot of them, but not all of them. Hmm. Uh, oh, then we have another one. Uh, this is a complete one, much more recent one. So we'll probably end up using this if we need it. I don't know if it needs caps, but uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, no picture, blows fuse. Oh, another blowing fuse one. Interesting. Uh, caps if needed. Okay. Well, as we know, a blowing fuse isn't too hard to troubleshoot. It can only be, it can only be one or two or a handful of things. Um, but we've done this before. We know what to do and what to check. So let's see what we can find. Anything in the box? Nope. Neck board looks kind of dirty. Oh, wow. Oh, my lord. This will be one that I have to clean. And that's no big deal. We can go ahead and get it repaired. And then clean it afterward. Uh, that way we don't have to run it. Um, but it's already had caps. Looks like someone has done a cap kit already. Uh, all of these caps are... Uh, yep, all these caps have been changed. So it's already got a cap kit. It's already got a new, newer model flyback. And what the heck? What the heck is this? Look at that. Like someone took a... Like someone took a, a Dremel tool to that. What in tarnation? Well, that could be the problem right there. I don't know. Hmm, it doesn't appear to be all the way through the all the way through the case, but that is very interesting. Hmm. Is there any other outward signs of arcing to the case? Uh, no. Well, I don't see anything on the inside that would indicate arcing to the case or the frame, I should say. R103 has been replaced. It's not in the correct cage, or it's different. So, uh, hmm. Initial inspection. R103 is odd. The flyback is <laughs> damaged. I don't see anything else. The HOT is a different kind. Someone's changed this out. I don't know if that's compatible or not, but I'm assuming that it is. We'll test and see if it's blown it or shorted it, I should say. It's, if it's shorted, it won't matter. We'll take it out and put the right one in there. Uh, it's missing the insulator. I, I don't think it needs an insulator. I don't think this particular style needs insulators. Um, but yeah, initial inspection. That's about it. Flyback damaged, HOT odd, and uh, R103 odd. So, let's take a look. Man, this is filthy. Let's take a look at the back side. Everything appears to be here. Uh, no broken pot there. Any broken pots on the neck? Nope. Uh... What in the, what in the hell is going on here? This is twisted around. Oh, sorry. This is completely twisted. It should be like, uh, like this. <laughs> what the, that's backwards. Somebody's got the wrong... Is that a 1034? 
Well, no, it's a 2068. That's the correct... 2068 is the correct one for a 7000. But these are 1034, so it's possible that somebody stuck this in here backwards because it's the, em the emitter and the collector, or the base. Let's see here. Base. Uh, it's possible the, collect the collector and the emitter... See, the C is for collector and E is for emitter. On this one, it could be the opposite way. It's possible someone put this in there like that because it's actually backwards. I don't know the specifics without looking it up, but it's possible that the 2068, the 2068 here versus the 1034 is actually, the emitter and collector are backwards. That's why they put that in there backwards. And you can see that it's the, the edge there that's angled is over here on these two. But on this one, it's that way. And I don't know if someone did that on purpose. We'll, we'll uh, measure it out and find out. And there's a giant hole in this resistor. Not that it would mean anything, but... Man, this is uh, quite the science experiment going on with this one. But let's take a look at the back side. Must have uh, width, width problems because they got this all the way up like that. But the back side... Uh, hmm. Yikes. Yikes indeed. Um, yeah, they must have had R103 issues because they got the dial on the back side. And this is all butchered around here. Uh, and we got some lifted pads here for the flyback. It's always, it's always fun reworking other people's uh, work here. None of the flux has been removed. And we've got... You see how I can get my knife blade under there? So we got lifted pad here. And lifted pad there. Lifted pad there. This one here is lifted up. This one's lifted. You get half, half my tip under that one. So we got a whole bunch of lifted pads on the flyback. Uh, no solder, I'm sorry, no flux cleanup. I'm surprised that R101 here, this leg of R101, is not uh, all oxidized and burned up. We'll still do our solder bridge there, but there's a night, nightmare fiasco going on here. There's a nightmare fiasco going on here with the HOT. You can see it giant, uh, this whole area of the pads gone. So, this is uh, not too big of a nightmare scenario, but pretty scary. And yeah, this diode is supposed to be on the other side of the board. When they changed R103, they must have had that taken out for testing or something, I can't say. Uh, this is rather odd as well. I don't know why this is here. Uh, that's not something normally there. Not going to worry too much about it. Uh, so we need to... Well, it needs some cleanup, but we'll do that afterward like we always do. So I guess for now what we'll do is go through and do all of our testing that we normally do for a blowing fuse and if we find things wrong we will repair it and I'll do some reflow and some more inspection but uh, yeah I mean if this uh, I'm torn between replacing the flyback or not because if this fires up and, and operates and runs for three, four hours without having any issues. I may just leave this flyback in here because there's no reason to change it if it's functional, but this right here is not good. And do I want to install another flyback to replace one that's working just because of this, if this isn't posing a problem? However, you know, the electricity can pop out of here at any moment's notice, so I don't know about that. Um, I actually have three 7,000 flybacks, but I don't know if I want to use one to replace this one if this one's functional. You know what I mean? I just, it's it's tough to determine that. It is damaged, but I don't know what would even cause that. That's like someone intentionally dremeled it away for some reason. and I, Who knows? But that will remain to be seen later. So let's just do our normal testing and see what we can figure out. First, let's, like we always do, let's get rid of the neck board here just to make it easier on ourselves. Ah, uh, oh, there we go.
All right. Um, focus wire. G2 wire, the G2 should have a post on it, but someone's taken the post off and just soldered the wire right to it, which, I mean, that's fine. All right, so G2 wire. So that should be our neck, everything off of this. There we go, neck board is free. And let's take a zip tie and zip tie our remote harness here so it doesn't bend back and forth and break wires off. strain relief fashion. Okay, well, let's start with the... Uh, our rectifier diodes. Meter in diode mode. Good. 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 Good, and... Good, all right. Uh, okay, let's test R103. Should be three ohms. This guy right there. Two point three, close enough. And we can test this diode. We don't normally test it, but we'll test it anyway since we're here. That checks good. Okay, uh, R101. Should be 4.5 to 6.5 in circuit. Well, that's a bit low, but I'm not, oh, sorry. That's a bit low, but I'm not really too worried about it because I'm the pins are a bit oxidized. Let's go to the back side. Uh, all of my cores are tangled up here. You got me all twisted up in the game. There we go. Not sure how that happens. There's a science behind that, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so R101 is, of course, this guy right there that always has the burned up pads. Oh, <laughs> that's that's nice. Look at this. We got a... <laughs> whatever's going on there. What resistor is that for? That's for this capacitor. That's this capacitor here. Good lord. Um, all right, anyway, let's test our 101 here on the back side. Uh, we kind of reads the same thing. That's a bit low, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's not open or way out of tolerance, so we'll call it okay for now. Um, R104 uh, should be f 15 ohms. That's good. R101 was good. R96 should be 1.8. And then um, I forget which one this is. R88 should also be 1.8. Yep. Yeah. Uh, R89 is the big ceramic resistor here, should be uh, 3.9. There we go. Um, R97, I believe, should also be. 6.8, if I recall correctly. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 220. 220, I think that's supposed to be, but 234 is not too bad. I think it's 220. Could be 240. You know, I try and go off memory, but that's close enough. If it's 220 or 240, that's obviously 233 is fine. So that's this one right there. So all of our power resistors are good, uh, 88, 101, 89, 96, and um, 97. Our 103 is good, rectifier diodes. Um, so let's test our D18, our diode in here across uh, the yoke connector. There we go. 
that is good. And then we'll test our width cap, C38 is this guy right there, make sure it's not bad. We're just checking to make sure it's not shorted, that's this point to this point. And it is not shorted, okay. Well, uh, D13, D14, I always get these backwards, uh, let's see, it's this way. There's D13 is good. Switch the leads around for D14. D14 is good. All right, HOT time. That is this one to here. Shorted, shorted. And our voltage regulator on this, the tall type, not, there's a wide type and a tall type. Tall type should be pins three and four. Not that it matters. Uh, if it's shorted, but negative to pin 3, positive to pin 4 on the diode checker. And it's good. Look at that. Well, I don't say good, but it's not shorted. So if we check our B plus resistors, the quickest and easiest way, uh, we see here 180 ohms. Well, it says 180 ohms on it. So if we go to ohms, it should be 180. Well, that's not right. That's not right at all. 136 is way out of spec. Should be 180. And this, this when we test this, this should be closer to 150. And we're at, yeah, see 136. If we go to diode mode, 0 0.150 is what it should be. It's 0.117. So something is wonky there. Uh, I don't know if it's caused by the HOT being shorted, but that's not a, a correct reading. That's a wonky reading there. And I wonder if I was to take the wire out of circuit here. Let's just take this blue wire out of circuit. There we go. And let's see what it reads now. It's going to be hot, but it should be closer to 180. Ah, uh, hold on. Uh, there was our point one. You saw that? If I go back to diode, look what we have now. There's our point 0.155, so that's closer to what it should be. Now if we go to this, 184, yeah, so something in circuit is causing it to read like that um, incorrectly. So we know our resistor is good, so we'll put this back in here. And I gotta wonder if our uh, voltage regulator might be faulty as well. It probably, it reads correctly. Uh, well, I say correctly, it, it doesn't read shorted, uh, but Let's see what it reads now that we've kind of reflowed this because we know it reads correctly with it unhooked. I gotta turn my fan on here. So it's gonna be hot, but let's see what it reads now. Yeah, see it's 140, see yeah, something's weird in circuit there. Um, we may have bad B plus regulation. Um, so I'm tempted to just replace the voltage regulator as well. So it looks like, uh, well, hold on. We could have, our critical safety cap should also read shorted if our HOT is shorted. If we go across here, see that one reads okay, but I bet you this one reads shorted. Yeah, see this is the, this is, I mentioned before that some of these have a, a single cap with four legs. And some of them have two caps, a C69 and a C36. So there's two caps in here, two blue caps, one C69 and one is C36. So the C36 one is the one that reads shorted because it's attached to the HOT. So we'll have to take out the HOT to find out if it's a C36 short or a HOT short. And then we will, uh, I'll change out the voltage regulator as well. So almost every time you ever get a blowing fuse chassis, almost every time it's usually always HOT and voltage regulator or one or the other. Now it could be a C38, I've seen C38 cause this to go and these are actually okay. Uh, C36 can go out and cause these to be okay and take the fuse. So almost always it's usually HOT and or the voltage regulator, but other times it can be C38 or C36 as well. So just keep that in mind, but I mean, I think the last three of these that I've done with the blowing fuses have been HOT and voltage regulator and everything else was fine. But you know, you can have the fuse going out for 
Uh, the stuff I just mentioned as well as rectifier diodes, R103, any of these other power resistors. So that's why you always check everything. And I've even seen HOTs get taken out by this resistor being bad. There's a resistor. There's a couple of resistors right across here in front of the HOT. And they tie right to... See how it ties right to this leg? These two resistors are in line with this leg. I've seen one or both of these be way out of tolerance and cause the HOT to go out because of that. So I've even seen these take out the HOT as well and cause the fuse to go. So it can be any number of things. Sometimes it's not always easy, but you uh, can get lucky. So we'll just swap out the HOT and the voltage regulator and see what we get. But I'm not gonna be able to power it up after doing that. I am gonna have to go through here and do a bunch of uh, other testing on joints and reflowing because of the previous rework, if you can call it that. And uh, yeah, this is pretty sketchy. I don't even know if that's even touching anymore. It appears to be. Well, we're gonna eliminate that possibility by just bridging this here. There we go. Problem solved. Um, R103, I'm sorry, 103. R101 uh, Why are you being so difficult here? There we go. So we'll fix that. Um, that all seems okay. D18. I'm only just going to go through here and do and hit stuff that I want to uh, make sure is good before we power it on. So we got R101 there. We fixed that capacitor leg. We'll have to get all of this fixed up when we change the HOT. Voltage regulator pins seem okay. But this is gnarly. Uh, Let's just do some continuity checks here. Huh. Okay, that seems fine. That's a straight shot there to there. Okay, we got continuity. This one here with the missing pad, there's no, there's no connection to that. This has no connection, so that's fine. It, people, this is what happens when people use uh, irons that are not hot enough. And when they're not hot enough to melt the solder, they end up putting too much pressure on the pad and it busts the pad right off. So you, if you're using an iron that's not hot enough, at least 750, 800 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, uh, that's what I run mine at. I run it at 800, 7, 750 to 800 depends, but somewhere between 750 to 800. If it doesn't get that hot uh, and you're using an iron that, that you don't have a temperature gauge on, you don't know what the wattage is or what, how te what temperature it is, uh, you'll see people do this kind of thing all the time. So, not good. But I think everything else appears to be okay uh, for what I need to do. So let's get this HOT out of here and the voltage regulator out of there and I'm interested to see what we read on our resistor with this removed. <clears throat> Life goes on without me cause I ain't got nobody. Nobody, nobody cares for me. Nobody cares for me. I'm so sad and lonely, sad and lonely, sad and lonely. Won't some sweet mama come and take a chance with me? Cause I ain't so bad. You have to excuse my choice of music there. I'm, I'm a bit of a nut. It's just for some reason that song's been in my head all day. I haven't heard it in 30 years, but for some reason that song's been in my head all day. And they got 
a lot of solder on here that unnecessarily coated. Boozy boozy bop, diddy bop. Now I can't do the red. Humble if 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 humble Something like that. If you know what that song is, you know what I'm talking about. Let's look and see. Yeah, that should come out. Okay. Let's grab. Uh, wow, what a disaster this is. Let's see if we can save ourselves a little bit of time and just lift that up while we're heating it up here there we go that should work a little trick of the trade there comes right off and saves you some time on trying to use your braid or your desoldering gun, whatever you want to use, just lift that out or lift it up. Now that should come right out. I got to get some of the solder off the leg here. Okay. So that should come right out as soon as we. Take this loose. There you go. So I'm interested. We'll test this, see what we get. And then HOT. right out. Yeah, see this doesn't require the the uh, insulator and there's not one installed corresponding so okay let's make sure out of circuit that they're still bad absolutely and three and four See, 0 0.405 is a low reading. Oh, sorry, hold on. That's a low reading. So if we grab another one out of my uh, parts bag here, I don't appear to have any uh, replacement HOTs, but I do have an alternate that we can throw in there. So if we grab a good one, that I know works and if we test see if we test this one we get 0 0.404 that's let's low if we test a good unknown good one see there's 0 0.559 this is bad even though it, it doesn't read shorted I wonder if one and two are shorted nope Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, you can see there that it that's not correct. See, I read these backwards. Point three. Oh, yep. There you go. Check that out. Uh, if we go to pin two and three, see how that has a reading. Point three three nine. On this one, that's known good. Two and three, nothing. So even though it's not shorted, it's bad. So you may not always have a shorted voltage regulator. You can have one that's just wonky. And we found that out by reading it when it was reading 
you know, out of circuit 0.4 instead of 0.5. And then also across our B plus resistor is reading 140 ohms instead of 180. So yeah, well, this is even though it's not shorted, it's bad. So very interesting. So we have one left here. This is the last one of these, the last uh, 3130 that I have, and I don't have any HOTs. So uh, we're going to use an alternate here. Uh, that's in the other bag. Now, here's a little bit of trivia for you. The K7400, K7500, U2000, and the U5000 are a different part number of HOT. However, they are fully compatible with the 7000 and vice versa. Uh, it has been tested and has and, and does work. I don't know about longevity. I haven't ran them for hours and hours and hours and hours. But I know for a fact that a 7000 HOT will run in a, a 7400, 500, uh, 2000, 5000, and vice versa. So, for experimentation purposes, I think I've got one of these that we can use from my bag of parts here. Yep, I got a 3686. Actually, I think that's a that's a seven thousand. I think thirty six eighty eight. Nope. Yeah, thirty six eighty six. You can see here. Uh, I think thirty six eighty eight is the seven thousand. Give me a second. Here. Uh, thirty six eighty can't read. 1398, huh. Let's take another look here. 1398, huh. Well, uh, I could have swore that 3688 might have been the 7000, but regardless, uh, it doesn't matter. You can use the dedicated HOT for a 7400, 7500, 2000, 5000 on a 7000, it'll work just fine and vice versa. So if we test this one, uh, let's see. We got diode mode. You can't see them, but we got 0.477 and should be open. Yep, okay. Yeah, I think uh, we'll use that. The other option here was the FJL series, the FJL 6920 or another option you can use. These will work as well, but I haven't ran these for very long, so I, do, I can't say with certainty, but they will at least operate, but I don't know for how long or what the longevity is. No, I haven't done full hours and hours of testing, but uh, we're gonna throw this in there just to see what we get. The one, this is for the, you know, like I said before, this series, this series of chassis here, so. So now we have our HOT and our voltage regulator, so let's put all this away, get them soldered in, and see what we get. Alright, that bag of parts is back together. Alright, get this out of the way. Oh, I need an insulator. Get back here, you. I got insulators right here. Insulators! Mount up. Oh, I got one left. Got to order more of those. Okay. Set that in place. Stay there, you rat. Okay, this goes the opposite way, so we need to bend that the opposite way. And right in you go. It's never easy 
There we go. Okay. Now we need this and tweezers to hold it in place. Are you fighting me here? Okay, well, then we'll use a different one. You want to be like that? That is fine. go for that. And now our voltage regulator. Get that in here. Assuming all of the legs will line up and cooperate. Of course not. There we go. Got it. Let's get this in here. Got it. Get it. Got it. Good. Okay, just don't want to over torque it. So let's solder this in here. Should be good. We'll go ahead and just fill that hole again. And that one. All right, and let's grab our HOT. See what we can do about this. Uh, I guess what we'll have to do is just resort to basically what they did. Bend that over. Bend that over if I can. Don't think I'm going to be able to. Yeah, that's about the limit of what that's going to do. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Doesn't look good, but it'll work for testing purposes. Alright, so it's pretty much a success there. So let's make sure we have good readings now. Okay, uh, we'll start with the voltage regulator, pin 3 and 4. We're hoping for about 0 0.155, 0 0.15 something. There you go, look at that, 0.15. And I'll bet you our resistor now reads our proper 180. Yep, so we definitely had a bad voltage regulator. Not shorted, but still bad. And uh, go back to diode mode, HOT. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Is our C36 still shorted? No, it is not. Both ways read good. Okay, um, I still don't know what this is doing here, but I'm not going to remove it because it's obviously serving some type of purpose. But uh, I think. Nothing to it 
now but to uh, get it on a tube and see what we get I do have I am going to use my 2 amp circuit breaker we're going to clip the 2 amp circuit breaker on the fuse holder and we're going to use this in lieu of a fuse in case something is still bad we don't explode our fuse supply and this will just pop like a circuit breaker and push it back in if you guys want to order one of these for yourself, this is the part number, 7277-2-2. Uh, and if you want to use a 3 amp or a 4 amp or a 5 amp, it just changed this last number. So 7277-2-1234567891010, whatever rating you want, that's the part number. So, yep, that's what we're going to use for our power. And I'll just set it, let's say, right there. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready, so let's get it on a tube. Uh, it doesn't need caps. Caps have been replaced, so we will send these back to the person that, has, that owns this. And yeah, um, cross our fingers, see what we get. Of course, I'll reinstall the neck board here. Um, I'm interested to see if it does power up and work, what's going on here with this transistor. Which is very odd. I think it's, they had to put it in this way because it's a different design, but we'll find out. Actually, you know, let me just go ahead and get this reinstalled. Oh, come on. It's always something. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's done. Let's hook up our focus wire. And of course our ground wire broke off. Of course, this one that hooks to the frame broke off the neck board. <laughs> uh, so now we have to hook this to here. And this one to here. All right, let's get this soldered back on. Flux. We'll tin this up. There we go. And what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> it's tiny ground wire. I guess we'll make it work, but yikes. Okay, so we're gonna, I guess what we'll do here is let's solder this to here. And then we will uh, zip tie all this together. There we go. Grab another zip tie here. Prevent, prevent this from happening in the future. Now you got double strain, double strain relief on this, and now when you move this around, see how the wires bend at this point and not at the, they bend at the point of the convergence with the zip tie, and not on here, and they won't break off on you again. So I recommend doing that. See that? So that's what I recommend. Okay, so now um, you know we never inspected our remote board. Forgot to inspect the remote board. Uh, broken pots. Some kind of bent out of shape. 
but oh, otherwise looks okay. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and get it on the tube and cross our fingers and hopefully it doesn't blow up. Hopefully we don't see lightning coming out of this damaged flyback and we'll see what we get. Okay, here we go. We're all hooked up with anode neck yoke ground power remote board, but no video because I don't want to possibly send this feedback signal and damage my test board here if something does go wrong. So we're looking to make sure that uh, we don't have any lightning and arcing from the flyback. And if not, we're looking and hoping for it to power up and see what happens here with R103 being changed out, sitting in there kind of weird and precarious. Not sure why they did it that way. And the um, circuit breaker is still hooked up and it's right there. So we're gonna watch it, make sure it doesn't pop. So uh, let's see. Cross your fingers, one, two, three. Mm, it didn't make the right kind of noise. Yeah, the fuse didn't blow, or the breaker didn't blow, and it tried to turn on, but it wasn't making the right noises. If we try again here, I'm just curious. Uh, see, it, it, I heard some type of static voltage there, and the fee and the breaker didn't go. Do I dare leave it on? Let's go ahead and plug in a video signal. And the pins are all bent, of course. Fantastic. Okay. Let me kill this overhead light. And let's see if let's leave it on here and hold our breath. One, two, three. Well, it is running. Ooh. My uh, isolation transformer just made a horrible noise. Let me try something else here. Let me try this again. Nope. My flyback, or I'm sorry, my uh, isolation transformer is humming like the Dickens. Mm, I smell something. No smoke, but something smells wrong. Hmm. Let me see what kind of troubleshooting I can do here. We'll see what I can find. Stand by. Okay, I found the problem. It turns out the reason that my isolation transformer was humming like the Dickens was because the replacement HOT that I put in after replacing the original here, um, this was the original kind of oddball one. This might even be one out of a out of a um, Henrix Polo if I was to guess, but. This one was shorted, which we found originally. So I put this one in there, and it fired up. You could hear, you heard it fire on. We had the high voltage, and then it kind of went to nothing. And then the isolation transformer began humming like crazy. And that's because the HOT got taken out as well. The new one I just put in there got taken out again. So there was something taking out the HOT. And I checked everything all over again. Nothing was bad. I found no bad components, so I went ahead and decided to go ahead and shotgun in another flyback. This was the original one that was all damaged by the Dremel or whatever the hell this was. And when I took this one out, I noticed that the corner was all kind of charred and melted. Uh, you can see that corner's kind of all melted up there, and there's a black mark under that leg. So I don't know if uh, improper installation damaged it or really what's going on with it. So I put a brand new one in from my stash. I had three brand new ones, took a new one, put it in. Uh, you can see it right here, and you can see that there's no <laughs> there's no damage to that one. So brand new flybacks installed, and that was the problem. So whatever was going on with this flyback was uh, causing a short on the HOT. I think it might even have been shorted to the frame. I can't say. But with the brand new HOT, I'm sorry, another HOT, I put a brand new uh, 3686 in there. Again, these are the ones that are meant for the 74, 75, 2000, 5000. But it is compatible with the 7000, so as we're about to see. So I put another HOT in there, a new flyback, and uh, I the, the new flybacks come with the screen putt all the way down, so I turned it up about a quarter. So uh, I just turned it on long enough to make sure I got a picture. I haven't adjusted anything, so with the new flyback in there and the replacement HOT again, check it out. Power's right up. Normal noises, and there you go. All right, so we've tackled that hurdle. Um, let's do brightness all the way down, contrast all the way down, uh, screen pop up until we get raster. 
lines uh, right there down till they just go away there we go focus and now we focus we can see we still have raster lines so we'll turn it down till they go away right there and now we'll do brightness and contrast uh, brightness needs to be right there contrast oh sorry uh, there we go too much we're going to probably have to go right about there and then readjust our focus slightly. Eh, this tube is old and tired. That's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. But yeah, there you go. It's working. Um, let's uh, acknowledge this. Do we have all of our colors? We do. Oh, wow. Fo our contrast is way too high here. Let's turn it back down right there. So there you have it. Uh, each each uh, size is way too wide. Let's make sure we can adjust that down here. I got my little white tool in here. And, yep, it's shrinking in. There we go. We got a black line on the right. And now we should be able to adjust each position. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Black line, black line. That's perfect width, uh, vertical size. And nope, oh, we got some 50, 60 hertz action going on. You can see that, see it folding over on itself down there. Let's get actual, there we go. You can see that it's folding over on itself. So let's adjust our 50, 60 hertz pot. Bring that screen back up. Let's adjust brightness again here. That's a bit better. Oh, hang on. This tube's old and tired. That's, that's why it's a test tube and not a one that I have in a machine. Okay, so if we look down here on the bottom, you can see the the it's folded over on itself. So let's get our 50 60 hertz pot adjusted here quickly and there you go perfect okay vertical size now is too big let's go back down on that all right oh contrast is too much still right there brightness well, we have all of our colors. It's terribly adjusted. Um, green is... Let's just put everything in the middle like we're supposed to, because I didn't do that. I normally, normally do that. Half of these are turned down all the way. Let's do... Uh, middle... Middle... Middle. So now everything's in the center. And, well, that's much better. Uh, contrast still is too high. There we go. So that's a bit better. Still not perfect, but we'll go with that. Yeah, so I think we are, well, brightness is still way too high here. Well, there we go. It looks like garbage. See, there's that's better, but okay. So hey, we have a repaired K7000, and all it needed was a HOT, voltage regulator and a flyback and of course I will do the full cleaning and the full the reflow and all of these the uh, flux removal and the cleanup and everything so I'll show that here at the end of the video I will show obviously we know what it looks like before and I'll go ahead and get it all cleaned up and we'll show what it looks like afterwards so there's not really much to it I've already got a video I'm sure you've seen it of cleaning the chassis but when it comes to cleaning off the flux I just use some denatured alcohol I don't, I don't use isopropyl, I just use denatured alcohol with the toothbrush and it works wonders, gets all that flux off of there, makes it nice and clean, so I'll show you uh, afterward how it all turns out. So, here we go, I will get uh, everything off and get it cleaned up. After it dries for 24 hours, I'll put it back on the tube and then we will uh, let it run for another 3-4 hours, make sure that it's good, and we'll call it a success. But for now, it's up and running. And it's running with a 7400, 7500, U2000, U5000 uh, HOT. 
So a little bit of a experimental knowledge for you there. If you ever run out of uh, K7000 ones, 1398 is what it, the 1398 is what's supposed to be in here, but it will run with the 3686 and probably a 3688 as well, if I was to bet. But you can see that it does operate well with that one, so no problems there. And uh, yeah, it's all repaired, and then we have a good perfect size. We have all three of our colors, so it turns out that that transistor probably does need it installed backwards because the uh, emitter and collector are backwards. So another interesting find there. And it's working. So thanks for watching. Let's get this all cleaned up and come back and we'll see how the cleanup turns out and then we'll do some more testing and see what happens. Okay, actually I want to do a before here because I did mention we already saw before but it's probably going to be more dramatic here if I show you the before and then I'll just cut right to the after. But I also forgot to mention that because when we first did the testing, uh, when I first turned it on the first time with the um, circuit breaker installed, it didn't blow. I went ahead and put in an actual fuse for the last portion of testing. So I wanted to show that that actually got done. So uh, for dramatic purposes, uh, here is the before. And here's the after. <laughs> nice, nice, quick, easy job. Not too difficult. Of course, like I showed before, you just use hot water, simple green, and a nice easy one inch bristle brush, clean it all off, spray the simple green, let it sit there for a few minutes and use the brush to agitate it, get it nice and soapy, and use your hot water to rinse it all off. Of course there are some areas where there's gunk where you have to use something a bit more abrasive like you know a chemical cleaner or something, but for the most part this turned out very nice. Uh, it's not perfect, I still have some little gunk areas, but I don't have any chemical cleaner and I don't like to really use that because I don't know how it'll affect and corrode various things, but I just use the simple green in the brush and it gets as clean as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be spotless, but yeah, much better. This is how it turned out. So I even got the uh, neck board all cleaned up and fixed up, as well as the remote board is nice and clean. I got the, the protector back on the back side of the remote board. And I also noticed a few things very interesting. Uh, well, not too interesting for this, but the zip tie was missing to hold all these wires in place, so I got that replaced. But when I was inspecting the bottom side, I noticed that there was, when I was cleaning it, um, it got removed. But before it got removed, there was a solder bridge across uh, this leg. This leg had a, there was a big solder bridge across here, and a solder bridge across here, and a solder bridge across here. So, like, somebody was soldering something and, and they f they took their iron and just basically went you know like this like that and it dropped a bunch of solder blobs on here I don't know how it wasn't affecting the image uh, but there was a bridge between these two pins and these two pins and these two pins and I had to use my iron to kind of clean it up a bit but the main bridge came off when I was brushing the bottom of the of the chassis so uh, yeah th this was all tied together so I got the full reflow done, and now it's time to go ahead and show you my procedure here for just cleaning all this flux off of here. You can see how much flux there is around here, and this is just horrible. Just horrible. So we're going to clean all that off, and around around here, and around there, and around up here. And uh, that's otherwise it's not too bad. But let me show you exactly what is going on here. I use uh, denatured alcohol an old toothbrush and a, and a nice uh, microfiber towel. Not, not that it doesn't need to be microfiber, but that's just what I use. So what I'll do is, is I'll just pour a bunch of, get off of there wire. Uh, I'll just pour some on the brush here, like so. And just kind of go to town on this. Sometimes you'll need to scrub the, the stubborn pieces with something a bit more callous, like, uh, there's gunk where it's gunked up. You want to use something to kind of scrape the gunkiness away. Then you can just clean this up with the brush before it all evaporates. And then you can just take your towel and kind of dab it on here. You're not going to be able to brush it because of the nature of these solder joints, but just dab it. And then there you go. It's uh, much better. Yeah. So see, it's still not quite, not quite perfect, but that's where this kind of comes in because you'll have to just kind of scrape away this where it's gunked up. But yeah, that's that's still much better than it was. So 
So yeah, that's about really all there is to it. So we kind of repeat that process for around the flyback here. Let's see if we can, because that's, look how, that's terrible. Um, yeah, uh, grab this again and we will pour a little sugar on me. And it's just very light scraping. You don't want to scrape the, the pads or do any damage to anything. You just want to get rid of the clumps of the clumps of the uh, flux. And you can see just how much better that is right there. You want to take your brush and kind of clean off all of the flux residue that's on the brush. Then we're going to do another quick round here. Then we're going to damp this. There you go. Nice and clean. Nice shiny solder domes, and except for this monstrosity here. Uh, but the pad was half gone. There's not much I can do about that. The pad was half gone when I took the original one out so but otherwise uh, yeah I mean it's gonna be fine they'll be fine the way that it is but there you go it's a pretty easy process and you can see how much better that is just like that uh, okay so now we can move on to this area here this should be fun pour some alcohol on the brush and just start slathering away here. Rinse and repeat. Sometimes you got some stubborn areas here, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just better than leaving all that flux on there. Well, and that's a lot better. Not perfect, but a lot better. And now that I see this in the camera, I'm going to fix this real quick. That's a bit, a bit better. I got some oxidation going on there. Let's just cover the whole thing. Call it good. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's move on to this area here. Much better. That's much better. And I mean, I guess that's about it. I'm 
I'm gonna leave this on this side of the board because the legs are too short to reinstall it on the top side. Someone cut it out of circuit instead of removing it properly and just soldered it back to the back side. So now I can't put it back on the top side. So I probably could rob one from another board, but it's fine leaving it on the bottom. It's not gonna hurt anything. <clears throat> Okay, well there you have it ladies and gentlemen, one uh, minty clean chassis, top and bottom. That's how I do it, hopefully it helped you out if you're ever curious on how to do that for yourself. And we have another working repair in the books. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more, no end to the content in sight. And We'll see you then.